Good morning from the Brumala in Glasgow. Glasgow. It is a uh, dry morning at the minute, although the ground is wet, so obviously it was raining. You can see there is an attempt being made for the clouds to clear or not. We don't know. We never know. We pretend to know, but we don't know. It's very noisy, something going. Oh, God help them. Hello, I'm back at the Brumala. I'm so happy. I missed it. I really missed it. Just, the space is so excellent and as fun as it was to be in new spaces. Um, I didn't, obviously, like when I did my random acts of dancing, I was sampling lots of different spaces and, um, and this is by far the best still because there's so much space and it's so flat and I really like being near the river actually. I think that's quite inspirational and, and there are people, like my regulars are here so I like that. It's my happy place, yay! So I wasn't going to come today here, I was going to be in Pollock Shields, but I felt like I have been traveling for the past week and I wanted to just touch base the place that I know. Uh, I slept nine hours last night, which was great because my sleep patterns were totally off as, as happens when you travel. And I almost didn't make it out this morning, honestly. I was like in my bed, I love my bed, I was like, I love you bed. <laughs> If I could marry my bed, I might. I might. I love it that much. Um, it was crazy. It's like when I'm away, I get back. I'm, I have the best bed in the world. I don't, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but it, it cracks me up. I got into my bed last night at 8 o'clock. That's, that's how wild and crazy I am. I get into my bed and I'm like, oh, I love you. I love you, bed. I'm crazy. It made me laugh, though. It did make me laugh. And I did feel honest love for my bed in that moment. Anyway, that aside, here I am, and this is great being back. Um, so today, uh, my friend uh, Val Hallett sent me a message, and she said, it was a big list, it was a big list, Val, <laughs> it was a which is fine. And I only remember the first bit, and I kind of remember the last bits, but I'll tell you why. Because the first thing Val says to me is she's got this mouth ache problem, tooth ache problem, or something in this area anyway that is keeping her from sleeping and, and, and she's, you know, I can't get to sleep without painkillers and all this other stuff. And so she says this, but then she says, you know, and for the victims here and for that problem in the world and world peace and ecologically sound choices and blah, 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 blah. It's like basically sort of, my, my other friend out did something else to them once. She asked me basically to dance the world's problems away, which I'm, I'm working on it. Anyway. But I, I just, but she, she's like, because she felt so guilty about asking for herself. And, uh, and I, was, I was considering this, and I really, really identify with that. A friend of mine, Robert, said that to me the other day because my financial, I have a lot of financial challenges at the moment, <laughs> to put it mildly. And, uh, and he goes, you need to ask for what you need. I'm not exactly sure what I need is the problem. I will ask for it when I figure it out. I mean, okay, do I, I guess I need my debt to go away, but that's a different conversation entirely. But I, I understand the whole thing about, because I know I do, where I go, I'll be fine because I can just manage that or cope with that and then deal with the bigger issue, which is people who are much less fortunate than myself. Right, which is which is good and, and true on a certain level, but I'd like to address this word cope because I looked it up in the dictionary, in my etymology dictionary, and to be sure, and I think I might have looked this up at before, it means to strike somebody. This is another word like patience, which means to suffer, which I think we should just just eradicate from our vocabulary because coping is just about causing suffering really and which is related to being on the cross and I, I think that that's just not a good place to start from so firstly I first I just danced for your mouth today Val that was it because I think that I feel that you know if, if you are in a happy place then that translates into the world and you need to care for yourself first and especially it's really easy to identify the physical needs so take care of that because it's like you're feeling a physical pain go sort it out um well maybe you have already but uh, so anyway maybe it's something that, that they can't oh yeah you said they can't figure it out anyway so 
so I, that, you know, in terms of, but for other people, like, you know, you have a physical problem or something that is so easy to go, all right, I've got this physical problem. Fair enough. Go sort it out. It's the internal, in terms of what I was thinking, in terms of what the, and, and that's what happens, like, you know, all these big blow-ups that are happening in the world and our first response, and as it should be, is the physical, which, you know, in terms of people need to eat and they need clean water and, and, and all that. You think with all our resources, we would have sorted this one out yet, but we haven't because of greed in the world. Anyway, another conversation. I'm a little tangential this morning. Um, so my point being that these emotional needs are the ones that are more difficult to pinpoint, right? And, and they're the ones where a lot of our struggles stem from, I think. So in a very tangential kind of way, my dance today was that for us to start to identify the, the emotional, our own emotional needs and, and knowing how, and to know how to ask for them. I don't even know what the answer to that is actually. Because I'm, I'm a bit crap at it myself. <laughs> so I'd like, I'm dancing for that for everybody and me. And secondly, uh, because I was thinking about it yesterday, and like I, it's like I said yesterday, if, if, we, if any of our actions um, create suffering, then we cannot be happy. And a lot of our lifestyle choices do create suffering in, in, a, in a, a lateral way or in a direct way. So I think that the other thing is, part of that is that this whole thing about is to be truly happy, we must actively work to alleviate other people's suffering. And that's the other thing. So, so part of that is just making people happy. It's passing on the smile. It's the sneaky smile even. I love that. I love that when I smile at people and they're like, and they like kind of like almost can't help themselves to smile back. I love the habit. So, and sometimes people don't. And that's totally cool too. Because I'm not forcing my smile on people. You know, love that is freely given is only love. Love that is forced is not love. That's not love. That's, I don't know what that is. That's something else. I'll come up with something. <laughs> Man, I'm a bit dippy this morning. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna be in Polly Shields tomorrow, so that'll be different, eh? Bumped into my neighbor yesterday because he saw me dancing there um, a couple times. And he's like, uh, Mr. J, yeah, he's a very devout Muslim man. And he's like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> he can't figure it out. I don't know how to explain, you know, I, it's really, it's quite an interesting one because at least there is, there is an engagement there. Um, and so um, I don't want to, he's, he's a good man. He goes to mosque five times a day and he lives a good life. So hey ho, that's what he does. Um, he doesn't understand me. I <laughs> don't want to get in the queue. <laughs> I'm in that queue myself. So um, anyway, so hey ho, so it'll be very interesting. Um, and if you have any wishes you want me to dance, then I'll get to that. Um, so, yeah, woo! Happy days! Back in the last game! Yay! Have a good one! Bye!